The charge made by students at Gallaudet University for the Deaf is that their school administration refuses to listen. And so the students have closed the school down. An end to this plantation mentality. We will not back down. We will not concede. Good evening. I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. The spark that set off the controversy at Gallaudet, the board picked a new school president who can hear. She will be among our guests, and so too will be the president of the Gallaudet student body and actress Marley Matlin. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. You may find it momentarily distracting, but if ever the content of a program ought to be accessible to the nation's hearing impaired, this one tonight is it. The captioning at the bottom of your screens is normally seen only by people whose television sets have a special decoder. That is why it's usually referred to as closed captioning. It's been brought to our attention that a great many deaf or hearing impaired people don't have access to a closed caption set, so tonight, you can all read along as you listen and watch a story that is profoundly important to the hearing impaired among us. Let it be said, first of all, that each of our guests tonight has the best interests of the deaf at heart. The question is to what degree good intentions are enough, or whether in this case they amount to a form of outdated paternalism. We begin with this report from Karen Stone. The occasional silence of deaf demonstrators may appear unusual to the hearing. Gallaudet students have made their demands loud and clear. Deaf president now! Deaf president now! Deaf we deaf people have our right. And now the time that we need a deaf president. We don't want one. We need one. The confrontation was ignited by the university trustees' selection of a new president, choosing a hearing woman who is just now learning sign language over two deaf candidates. The students' reaction when the board chairman faced them Monday was outrage. If you'd like for us to listen to the students, the students will have to be a little quieter. We want doc, uh, Dr. Zinser to resign as the uh, president-elect, and we want to have a deaf person selected immediately. We want uh, Ms. Spillman to resign. We want to have at least 51% deaf representation on the board. Since then, students have virtually shut down the campus, marched on the Capitol, and brought national attention to the issue of deaf pride. Support has swelled to include alumni, staff, national deaf organizations, and today, the university's faculty. Therefore, be it resolved that the collegiate faculty meeting on March 9th calls for the Board of Trustees to withdraw its offer to Dr. Zinzer and to offer the presidency to one of those qualified hearing impaired candidates. During its 124-year history, Gallaudet University, the only liberal arts college for the deaf in the United States, has built an international reputation for excellence. It is the alma mater for 95% of the nation's deaf college graduates. Gallaudet offers 30 undergraduate and graduate degrees, along with preschool, elementary, and secondary school programs. It is a research institute and national clearinghouse for information on deafness. It is to the deaf people of the world what Mecca is to the Arab people of the world, what Jerusalem is to the Jewish people of the world. They say, I'm deaf. Those folks who call me friend. The reality of deafness is an integral part of everything here. The arts. Sports. In fact, the football huddle was invented here to hide hand signals. Communications. Gallaudet produces national television programs for the deaf. Gallaudet is America's face toward deafness. It's not just a university with a lot of deaf students. The history of the relations between deaf and hearing people is a history of a struggle, sad to say, between hearing people who thought they knew what was best for the deaf and deaf people who had uh, very different views. It's a struggle that many feel goes beyond the question of who will lead Gallaudet University. It's a struggle over civil rights. 
black people have developed their image. Women have developed their image. People in New York City have, there's many kinds of ethnic groups. We have our own opportunity to develop our image too. Why are we not being given this opportunity? Today, despite the overwhelming vote by the faculty and staff to side with the students, trustee Chairman Spillman and newly selected president, Dr. Elizabeth Ann Zinzer, said they will not be swayed by the students' demands. I am committed to providing leadership to this great university. I have no illusions that it will be easy at all. I am not willing to say I made a mistake, and I am pleased to report to you that the, major the board members who voted in the majority opinion do not believe that they made a mistake. Today, the two deaf candidates for president express support for Dr. Zinzer, and the trustees are adamant that she will remain president. But the students, buttressed by growing outside support, vow to continue their fight until a deaf president takes office. I don't want my deaf children to believe that their, their only salvation is to be a hearing person. So throughout the world, the resolution of this is a message to deaf people everywhere. It may be a message of, you can do it, you can determine your own fate, or it may be a message of, no, you can't, not yet. This is Karen Stone for Nightline in Washington. Later, we'll be joined by actress Marley Matlin, who is deaf and who won an Academy Award for her role in Children of a Lesser God. But joining us first when we come back, the new president of Gallaudet, Elizabeth Ann Zinzer, and the president of the Gallaudet student body, Greg Liebach. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by NutraSuite. It's said that we ask the board of trustees of Gallaudet University to send their chairman, Jane Spillman, or any other member of the board to join us tonight to explain their decision to appoint Elizabeth Ann Zinzer as president. The invitation was declined. A spokesperson said the trustees decided to send President Zinzer herself to represent their views. Dr. Zinzer, whose doctorate is in educational psychology, served as vice chancellor at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro from 1983 until this week. She is with us in our Washington bureau. Also joining us in Washington, Greg Leibach, whose name I mangled a moment ago, a junior at Gallaudet, majoring in engineering, who is president of the student government and also a leader of the student protest. Greg, his parents and brothers and sister are all deaf. Interpreting for him tonight is Betty, do me a favor, pronounce your name for me, please, so that Kalanimous. I get it. Kalanimous. Kalanimous, Betty Kalanimous. So please do not be confused. Uh, the person whose views you are hearing expressed uh, is, of course, uh, Greg Leibach, but you will be hearing a woman's voice. Now, Greg, just give me very quickly the conditions that you and the rest of the student body have set forth. Okay, there are four conditions that we have established. And all four of them have been supported by both the hearing and deaf faculty and staff. And the deaf community, as far as we can tell wor worldwide, has supported these. First, that Dr. Zinsa resign and that we have an, a deaf president selected. Second is that the chairman, Spillman, resign from the board and as chair. Third, that at least 51% of the board of trustees be deaf. And fourth, that there will be no reprisals against the students, faculty, and staff for their participation in this protest. What you are really asking for, or what you are really demanding here, amounts to an unconditional surrender, not only on the part of the newly appointed president, but also on the part of the board. Um, is there any room for compromise in your position at all? We regret that uh, we do not want to compromise at all because we have been making many concessions for many, many years. And this time we feel very firm that we will not bend on these issues. And we will stay on these four demands and it's becoming harder and harder for us to compromise because we're getting increasing support from more and more people. And we're getting financial support, moral support. And so the, uh, we feel that the board has very little support at this point, and theirs is decreasing. So we feel it's, it's uh, time for them to make the concessions. 
Dr. Zinzer, uh, what we have heard from both you and from the, uh, the chairman of the board and other members of the board indicates that there is little or no room for compromise in terms of your position either at this point. Uh, what's happening, of course, is that a whole lot of youngsters here are not getting an education. You are not really to begin, not able to begin your job. Uh, you seem to have neither the support of the faculty nor of the student body right now. Uh, surely everyone must sympathize with you to a certain degree, but doesn't there come a point where you have to say, the university has got to be able to do its business, and if it can't do it with me, then it's going to have to do it with someone else? Well, Ted, I've taken the position, uh, having been invited to serve as president last Sunday night, and not... Uh, intending to be available until July, but coming to Washington this week and discovering uh, the situation, I elected to go ahead and assume my duties immediately in order to attempt to resolve some of the concerns and difficulties that are occurring on the campus. I believe very deeply in the work and the mission of Gallaudet University, and I believe that this is not only an issue in the deaf community, which is a very serious issue, but it's also an issue in the higher education community. So I'm committed to assuming the responsibilities that I agreed to assume last Sunday night until such time as the Board of Trustees may elect to ask me to step aside. At this point, they have not done that, and I'm fulfilling my duties and am in place at the present time as the president. Please understand, I don't question, and I don't think anyone else does, Excuse your credential. Yes? Excuse me, uh, I would like to make one clarification here. The Board of Trustees has invited um, Dr. Zinser to t take her place as the, university, uh, as the university president, but there is no support on the campus for that, and we have not accepted her and recognized her as the president of Gallaudet University. No, I understand, but uh, you must also understand that normally the uh, president of a university is not elected by the student body, and the question that I was just posing to Dr. Zinzer and was about to repeat to her is, while it is true that you can only be invited to serve or invited to step down by the board, are you not facing an impossible position when neither the faculty nor the student body appears ready to support you indeed when both are calling for you to step down. Uh, I believe at the present time that a very strong sentiment is being sent to me with regard to asking me to set, step down, but I am not convinced at this point that that is uniform. I've had many uh, indications of support from the campus community. I have had indications of support from Harvey Corson and from King Jordan, who were also candidates for this post. And I'm be I believe that if I'm given an opportunity in the next couple of days to engage in person-to-person -person conversations with the leadership in the student body and the faculty and the staff, the alumni, that we might begin to establish the contact that is needed in setting the agenda for the future of the university. It is a great university. It deserves to have strong academic leadership, and I'm hoping for those conversations. All right, we're going to have to take a break right now, and when we come back, we will be joined by actress Marley Matlin. <laughs> Last year, she received the Academy Award for Best Actress for her role in Children of a Lesser God. This year, Marley Matlin will be one of the presenters at the award ceremonies. Ms. Matlin, who holds an honorary doctorate from Gallaudet, joins us now in our Los Angeles Bureau, and interpreting for her is Jack Jason. You have become certainly a symbol of pride for many deaf people around this country. It's in that capacity that I want to talk to you tonight. Why do you think it is so terribly important to so many people at Gallaudet and in the hearing impaired community that there be a deaf president? Well, I know why it's important to be here. I mean, I think it's important as a role model to deaf people. I, first of all, let me thank you for inviting me. Um, what I see happening at, at Washington, D.C. with Gallaudet University is something that really is really disappointing to me. I know that there is a board of trustees who have chosen a hearing president and a disagreement on the part of the students. But there is also a university that for 124 years has never had a, a president who's deaf, and I think it's time to have a deaf president. Uh, I'm not familiar with Dr. Zinzer, and I respect her as a human being, and I understand exactly what she does. But I disagree in the fact that, in the fact that there have been only two or three deaf board members, and they were the ones who voted for the deaf candidates, and the hearing people have voted for the hearing candidate, 
I think it's time that, I mean, that shows that there's something wrong and there's, there needs to be a change. If, and I, I don't know for a fact that this is so, but if it were true that the other two candidates simply were not of the same caliber as Dr. Zinzer, if they simply would not make as good a president, is it so important that there be a deaf president uh, that someone be selected even though their credentials are not as good and their qualifications are not as high? I think, I mean, there just has to be somebody who's qualified and deaf. There are deaf people out in the community. I mean, you don't know how many deaf people there are. There are lots of qualified people out there. It's unbelievable. And I have to tell you that um, I've talked with a lot of people here in California about what they think that's happening in, Cal in Washington, and they support the students 100%. Um, I've seen uh, children here at deaf schools who have dreams to, to go to Gallaudet College, to become whatever they want to be. And now they see students protesting on the street against uh, the fact that they have a hearing president or, or whatever is happening there. And their, their dreams are shattered. It, it's not good. It, they're not providing the role model that they need. And I'm just letting them know that I'm a bit embarrassed to have this degree from Gallaudet University because I was chosen by the board. Those are the people, I'm sorry to say, those are the people who I think are really deaf. Let me talk to Dr. Zinzer again for a moment. And the question I would put to you, Dr. Zinzer, is given the intense passion of feelings here, given the importance of the symbolism, given what Marley Matlin has just said, mm -hmm. uh, I know you can understand it because you're an empathetic person. Uh, can you understand it to the point that you might even say, if it's that important to all these people under those conditions, I would step down? I feel that it for, it the first step needs to be having some conversations with students, sharing these views with me and helping me to understand this perspective. Uh, I would like to ask why, if I'm you, you know, Why didn't we have the conversations uh, before, Marley says? I would like before to ask. Before the decision was made. The, there were individuals on the search committee and on the board of trustees that had that opportunity and that's where the action normally takes place when a selection of a president is uh, going on. But I would like to ask Marley a question. I understand that not long ago she encountered a considerable amount of controversy on the Gallaudet University campus herself and I wonder how she overcame that controversy uh, when she con faced it. A lot of controversy about what? Uh, when, when it was being considered for your honorary degree. And I yes. wonder how you overcame that, Marley. Well, I, I mean, I overcame. I mean, I understand the position, uh, the question that you're asking. But um, I accepted the honorary degree that they gave me because, I mean, there was no protest. I, I, I never saw it myself. Um, I can let you know that I'm just, again, I have to repeat it again, I'm embarrassed about what's been happening there. I really I'll, am. I'll tell you what, let me interject here for a moment because I'm afraid we're going to get, we're going to get lost on, a, on another issue here. And what I'm trying to get to is clearly whatever room there was for conversation now seems to have been lost in the middle of demonstrations. And I must say, Dr. Zenzer, uh -huh. I'm reading in tomorrow morning's Washington Post that several members of Congress are threatening or saying that the possibility exists that they will have to cut off some of the funding to Gallaudet College unless you are withdrawn. And 75% of Gallaudet's funding comes from Congress. Yes, I understand. And I would find that to be a very unfortunate circumstance because Gallaudet University is a private institution, admittedly funded largely by the federal government. And I'm hoping that the Congress will allow me to take my place as president and provide the opportunity for leadership in moving the university into the 20th century. Excuse me, Ted. Uh, no, I'll tell you what, hold on one second, Excuse Greg. Uh, we have to take a break. I promise when we come back, I'll come to you first of all, okay? We'll continue our discussion in a moment. Conversation now with Greg Leibach, the student representative from Gallaudet. Uh, Greg, you indicated at the top of this broadcast that you are not prepared to have any compromise. But uh, let me ask you this. Would you be prepared, together with a representative from the faculty and perhaps even a representative uh, from one of the Congress people who serves on the board to meet with a board representative and Dr. Zinzer in order to try to create some kind of a solution that will be to everyone's benefit. What's happening right now is to no one's, clearly. Okay, Ted. Um, my, my remarks now are addressed to uh, Dr. Zinzer because I really feel it's important to uh, address what she said. Uh, she said she was not convinced 
uh, because she got some indication of support. But I think that the reasons that she's not convinced is because she doesn't have access to the community um, and there's no dialogue. I mean, there really, really is no one solution that can be reached unless these demands are met. There's been a lot of damage because we may lose funds from Congress. We already have a lot of uh, destructive uh, forces now on the deaf community. Uh, we have to, uh, something that you're going to have to kind of clean up yourself because you kind of created this. Well, let me, uh, b before Dr. Zinzer responds, let me just ask you to be a little more directly responsive to the question that I asked you. And that is, since there's been all this talk about dialogue, would it be possible, for example, tomorrow for you and a representative of the faculty and a representative of the board and Dr. Zinzer and perhaps a congressman to sit down and try and work something out? We're coming to the end of the school year. I'm sure a lot of people's lives are being disrupted here. Cannot something be done by dialogue even at this point? We have had some uh, dialogue with Dr. Zinzer in the past, and we came out with uh, no positive solution. So we have uh, decided on the basis of this that there will be no dialogue. Until the four demands are met, we were not ready to have any more dialogues. It's a very, very simple request. And that request, uh, uh, just may have to be our, you know, our command in the future. All right, Dr. Ted, Ted, Dr. Ted. Dr. Zinzer, well, hold on, folks. Dr. Zinzer, Ted. we're down to the last 30 seconds. Yes. And I, I really do feel that Dr. Zinzer needs to have a chance to respond to this, so please go ahead. Thank you, Ted. I did uh, have an exchange for about 10 minutes this morning with four of the students, which was very short, attempting to make contact with the students. And I have invited them to join me tomorrow and hope that will be possible. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, we, we've just made a command well, decision Ted. here. We're, yeah, we're going to go over a little bit. Uh, don't worry right. about it, Marley. You've got, a, you've got a chance to jump in here, too. Please, go ahead. Oh, great. Good. Thank you. Um, you know, I think that, to get to the point, 124 years is much too long. 124 years of only one-way conversations. You know, and I can tell you truthfully, Dr. Zinzer, I really think how arrogant it can be of the university to come to a school not knowing a thing about deafness, not knowing a thing about sign language. And I'm talking to all board, hearing people who are deaf inside. I think they are deaf inside. It's, it's very selfish on their part not to let deaf people have the chance to speak, have the chance to be the president. And I think the whole time for that 124 years of one-way conversation is something that has to change. It has to change and there has to be new lives, there has to be new everything. Dr. Ted, Zinzer? Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. If I can make a final comment, I'd just like to say that at this point in time, as president of Gallaudet University, I want to indicate that the university is an extraordinary institution. It deserves to have the continued funding of the Congress and the continuing strength into the future in its mission as an educational institution and a significant research institution. It, excuse Whether me. Are you implying that a deaf person can continue that for the future? Not, not at all. As a matter of fact, I would hope... Well, someone said, someone said that. Someone, at the, someone I have heard in the board said that yes. deaf people aren't able to function in the hearing world. And I wish I could name that person right now, but I can't. Okay, I, don't, I do not know about a quote of that sort. I can only speak for myself. I I'm sure you do, Dr. Zinzer. I truly believe, I believe very strongly that a deaf individual one day will not only be the president of Gallaudet... Why not now? Why not now? Look at me. Look I, at me. I'm having a very No, hard... that's old news. I'm, that, I'm tired of that statement. One day, again and again, someday a deaf person... We've got to break this yes, cycle. It is again and again. It is. Okay. It's old news. The past news presidents have always said Folks, that. Someday. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. We have something approaching anarchy here because even while the two of you are talking at the same time, which makes it very difficult. We are also hearing the voice of a man speaking for a woman and the voice of a woman speaking for a man. Have a little bit of compassion for the viewer who's trying to keep up with who's speaking. And I'm going to okay. have to insist okay. that you do it one, one at a time. Now, Greg, you had a point you wanted to make. Go ahead. Okay, this statement, one day uh, a deaf president, is very old rhetoric. We've been hearing this for 124 years. We're getting tired of hearing this statement. This is just a cycle. Every time a new president comes in, they say, well, one day. So this shows that the press, past presidents have failed then. If they haven't provided any deaf leaders uh, any opportunities, then obviously Gallaudet hasn't done a good job. If they have done a good job, then there should be a deaf president, someone qualified to do this. Greg, I apologize for making a statement that aggravated you. But what I'm really saying is that I do believe that deaf individuals have great capacities. There has been a tremendous growth 
in the positions that deaf people hold. They have, a, they may, have may abilities. I finish, may I finish my statement? Then prove it. The Board of Trustees has the authority to make a judgment about who should be the next president. I'm not in the position to do that. I would like to say, however, that I think it's a premier institution and an institution in which the development of deaf individuals into leadership positions and policy positions can occur. All right, folks, let me, let me, excuse me one second. Let me ask, let me ask one more question and then we're gonna have to bring this discussion to a conclusion. The question is this. Quite clearly, Gallaudet, at the moment, is an institution that is not functioning at all. It is not functioning because the students don't want it to function. It is not functioning because the teachers don't want it to function. And if you'll forgive my saying so, Dr. Zinzer, it's a, it's a little bit disingenuous to suggest that you are some kind of a puppet who cannot act on her own because the board has said you're in. Uh, if you right. decided, uh, well, well, hold on, folks. Mm -hmm. If you decided on your own, that what you have here is an untenable situation, you're certainly a free individual to make that decision. Well, that's true, by, by virtue of resigning, that's true, Ted. But at this point, I haven't had enough conversation with the individuals and the parties involved in order to derive oh, a judgment of that sort. Come on. I had come a 10-minute ten, ten conversation with the students this morning <laughs> and am attempting this week to uh, set up What's some this? meetings in order to help us understand one another. And so the time will tell. All right, Marley, go ahead. You've been trying to get into this. Make your, make your comment, and then we, we well, will I mean, wrap I, this up. I really just can't believe this. I really can't. Um, I could go on and on with this, but um, it seems to be her show. Uh, All right, Greg, you, you, yes, go ahead. Can I say one final thing? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember, the board's got 17 hearing people on, on it. Almost all of them cannot sign at all. All of, them, all of them don't know anything about deaf people. They come in whenever they come in and meet. They, three times a year, they vote on things and then they leave. They shows no commitment. They don't know anything about deafness. And that's why we want to have a majority of deaf people on the board so that they can be in touch with, with uh, the administration of the school. And you, so the doctors Zinzer should not follow the board of trustees. They should follow what our demands are and our desires are because we know. All right, folks, I'm Ted, afraid we... Uh, no, I'm Ted, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid we really do have to bring this to a conclusion right now. If nothing else, I think we've begun to outline the dimensions of the problem. I regret to say I don't think we've come any closer to resolving it. But I hope for all your sakes that it is resolved in the very near future, and I'm very grateful to the three of you for joining us this evening. Thank you, Ted. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, 